Tommy do, sit on down, sit on down. Oh, boy. Y'all remember M.W.A.? Yeah. You remember when they say Compton in the house? Yeah. What well, Compton's in the house? Please give it up for Brandon Wiley. Comedy Q, make some noise in this motherfucker, baby. How y'all feeling? Y'all all right? God damn it, we in here. Feeling good, I'm in the place, all right. Uh, just flew in town, I was in Vegas this weekend, getting it in, getting a few stages and shit. Oh, janky-ass promoter flew me out on Spirit. <laughs> Who in here done flown Spirit before? Make some noise, flown Spirit. The struggle is real, ain't it? That shit, yeah. Who ha oh, for those who have not flown Spirit, who has rode the bus? Who has rode the city bus? Well, that's what the fuck Spirit Airline is. It's a city bus with wings on that motherfucker. Yeah, they got a bike rack on the front of the Spirit plane. I said the motherfucker check a whole 10 speed. I said, what you about to do with that? He said, I'm about to put this motherfucker up, baby. We finna take off. Got to be careful. Spirit is the only airline you can roll your window down on that motherfucker. <laughs> Manually, of course. I seen the now. I said, that shit bet not work. This shit, all I was. <laughs> I'm a hood nigga. I'm all outside the window trying to grab clouds and shit. <laughs> like, let me get some of this shit. <laughs> Got to be careful, goddammit. You gotta pay to get on and off a spirit flight. <laughs> yeah, they don't bullshit. We landed, I jumped up, I grabbed my shit off the overhead uh, compartment, I'm coming down the aisle, and I said, excuse me, you got your D-boarding pass? I said, D-boarding pass? You need to pay to get off this. I said, bitch, you know this is called kidnapping, right? You better open this motherfucking hatch and let her pimp off this bitch, I ain't got time to play with y'all. Cold part about it, when we left LAX and, and flew into Vegas, let me stop lying, we didn't fly into Vegas. <laughs> these, motherfuckers, these motherfuckers took off from LAX, landed on the 105, took that bitch to the 605, took that motherfucker to the 210, on to the 15, and ensued it on into Vegas. I looked out the window and stuff like, is that Buffalo Bill and Whiskey Pete? Ding, let me off this motherfucker, lady. The stewardess, I don't know where they got them stewardess from. It's, that's the most ratchetest shit I've ever seen in my life. Nigga, old girl got up, she doing a safety briefing, and she's like, okay, I need everybody to pay a goddamn attention. I'm like, I done paid attention before, but I ain't never paid a goddamn attention. That's a different type of attention. She's serious with it. She was like, if you gotta go to the restroom, you can do number one on my plane, but don't do number two on this plane. Do not boo-boo on our plane. We ain't equipped for that shit. I'm like, God damn, you mean to tell me? <laughs> I put your ass off mid-flight, and when a black woman doing this shit, you better listen, and she letting you know. That sign language will don't get fucked up. I'm like, you know what, baby? I'll hold it. I'll hold that shit. Don't worry about it. I'm sitting there with my ass locked the whole flight, like. <laughs> Got to be careful. Where my parents at, man? Where the parents at? I don't like to salute y'all, baby. Salute, salute. I know what you're going through, goddammit. I'm working with two of them. My baby boy, he three, my princess, four. I have never loved people with all the molecules in me and want to pull a pistol on these motherfuckers at the same time. <laughs> like I've never felt that way about a human, you know? Like my three-year-old, this, this nigga here, shit. What makes somebody get out of their bed at one, two in the morning, creep in your room, get their little naked ass in your bed, fall into a good sleep, 
and then piss in your bed. <laughs> Realize what he's done, get up and go get back in his bed. Then the fucked up part about it is he hid the evidence. He threw away the pissy draw so as if I wouldn't know who the culprit was. I pulled back the sheets. I'm like, motherfucker, when you start sleeping naked? What you doing, daddy? <laughs> I'm a young parent, man. I ain't learned how to talk and cope and be understanding and, and you know, and sit down and we, we work this out. My mom was from the projects. Shit, you know, she raised me. Do unto others as you want done unto you. So I'm coming from a show one night, you know what I mean? That's great parenting advice. Got Dom yeah, take that in. I'm coming from a show one night. I'm off 12 shots of Don Julio. I gotta say it like that because that's how that shit feel when it go down. Julio. I drunk so much Don Julio, I found out that I was four and a half percent Mexican. Full blown. Orale, so. I'm drunk to the motherfucker. I get home from a show doing an amazing job. I walk in and God stopped me before I, walk, I walked in the house. He said, there is a lesson to be taught here. <laughs> Teach that young man in the ways that I have taught you. <laughs> and I said, God, I'm listening. <laughs> so I went in that bedroom and I snuggled up with that nigga in that little twin bed and got up under them Toy Story sheets and fell into a good sleep and pissed all on that nigga back. Yeah, that's good parenting. And then I got up, took a shower, and got back in my bed. I traumatized my baby so goddamn bad that now, it's been six months, we have not had that uh, wet in the bed problem. My baby's so traumatized to now when he gets up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom, he comes and gets me. Daddy, you got pee pee, daddy? Daddy, you got pee pee? Come on with me then, daddy. <laughs> like this grown ass man pissed on a three year old. I need to teach you something. Come with me then, daddy. It's about teaching your kids, man. Teaching your kids. My little girl, my princess, who I love to death, she knows she got me wrapped around her finger. She, my baby don't understand reality yet at that age. Because she know I give her anything she wants. That's my job. But certain shit, I need to get her to understand. Like, hey, certain shit is fantasy and certain shit is reality. She's on my tablet the other day and I seen she was on Amazon. We've had this problem. She've ordered some shit and I had, I'm like, I got to supervise shit now. But I'm like, what you looking for? She's like, oh, I want a lion, daddy. <laughs> and I'm thinking stuffed animals, something cute. And there's some new toy shit that's out. She want a lion. No, this heifer want a full grown African goddamn lion. <laughs> And because I'm an Amazon Prime member, she believes it's going to be here in two goddamn days. <laughs> I said, if you don't put my damn tablet down and sit, <laughs> buying you no whole goddamn lion, you killed the goddamn hamster. What the fuck you think you're going to do with this lion? Got to be careful with these kids. Be careful. But I love quality time with my babies, man, because that's what, you know, kids only want your time. They don't want shit else from you. So my little girl, she come in the room, this is like two weeks ago. Best parenting advice I can give any of you guys, build a bar in your house. Get some liquor in your house. God created liquor for parents. Because he know these kids will fuck you up mentally. Got a nice ass bar. So I'm off this new thing right now. I've been messing with this Crown Royal Apple. Amazing, y'all try it out. I'm enjoying myself. I'm about half, you know, halfway through the bottle. Just, just having a good old time. It's about me at this point. Uh, my little girl was like, Daddy, it's movie night. I'm like, put the motherfucker in. Don't threaten me with no good time. Let's get to it. My baby put in Beauty and the Beast. I didn't even know this was my favorite movie until I got drunk. 
my goddamn scene jumped on, man. I jumped off that couch so fast. I was like, be our guest, be our guest. Put our service to the test. Tie your napkin round your neck, young bitch. We'll provide the rest. Soup du jour, hard on dirt. Why we only live to serve? Try the great shit. It's delicious. Don't believe me? Extra dishes. They can sing. They can dance. I mean, that motherfucker drunk. My kid's looking at me like, what the fuck is wrong with that? I'm like, put that Capri Sun down and get y'all some of this shit. <laughs> get on your daddy level. But you know what I mean? It's all about my babies now. I used to be out in these streets doing my thing. So I just keep my kids around, man, and family. But family gets on your goddamn nerves. It's hard to keep family around. Family is the some of the main people that gets on your goddamn nerves. Yeah, we can clap on that. Some of y'all in here gets on, yeah. We at my grandmother's 81st birthday. My granny is 81 years young, still in here doing her shit. Still doing her shit. It's gonna take a turn. My gay cousin James decides to come out the closet on Big Mama's 81st birthday. <laughs> this bitch ain't gonna be here much longer. You decide to steal her joy with shit we've been knowing since you were six, nigga. And if it's any homosexuals in here, I do not mean to offend. I believe in everybody's rights. I believe you should be able to play in whoever ass you want to and also allow whoever you want to play in your ass. Be free. Just keep that shit on your side of the table. This motherfucker want to come out the closet. I'm like, James, we've been knowing. And then he catches an attitude because he has changed his name to Jermaine. He has put an apostrophe over the A. And in his world, that means her main name. I said, nigga, your name is James. <laughs> if mama named him James, I'ma call him James. <laughs> he waits, he gets upset. I was like, we been knew you was gay, bro. It's, well, you family, we love you regardless. We don't give a shit, that's just what you do. How y'all know I was gay? I said, man, don't no little boy eat no fucking ice cream cone like this, nigga. <laughs> I said, James Gay. <laughs> Me and my other cousins, I mean, what the fuck is he doing? What y'all looking at? Well, the James Gay did a motherfucker, but that's our cousin shit. We love it. Gotta be careful, man. <laughs> Got to be careful. That's why I ain't went to Hollywood yet. I'm scared. Cause you know Hollywood is a Hollywood. That's a different type of homosexual in Hollywood. I was leaving out a club in Hollywood one time, and one of them motherfuckers they floated up to me. He was just. <laughs> I was like, "Hey, brother. So you motherfuckers don't even walk? Oh, you float around this bitch." Like, like being gay give you some type of wizardry. Like this motherfucker floated up to me. I said, nigga, time out. Lift your feet up. Let me see what the fuck is. Give him some heelys, nigga. Let me see the bottom of your feet. This nigga just floated up to me. And then the questioning just fucked me up. He said, I seen you on that little stage. You was just telling your little jokes. You be telling them, huh? I said, ain't that's what you do with the motherfuckers? You tell them. I don't know what's going on here, sir. I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> but like I said, I for everybody, right? Do your thing, man. That don't shit offend me. Do your shit. But I tell you one thing. Do not upset the homosexual community because they will be on your ass. <laughs> yeah, they protest. They don't give a fuck. They, and it, they just, it's like one text message gets sent out and everybody show up. I did a gay joke at a club one time. I left stage and went to get in my car. They were surrounding my car. They was marching and shit. Deal those and rainbows. Deal those and rainbows. De I said, what the fuck that got to do with anything? <laughs> you, you were mean. <laughs> well, goddammit, I'm sorry. Got to be careful, man. I always wondered, though, you know, because 
There's some magical shit to that. You got to, I always wonder, it'd be the dude in the club just sitting there doing it, one gay dude, he'd just be doing this shit right here. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck is in his hand? And I sat back one night, I got me a cognac, and I'm like, I'm finna see what the fuck, what type of wizardry is this? And I paid attention, it's gay dust. And he crushing that shit up real fine. And he wait till somebody he like walk past him and he get they ass like. <laughs> and that's it. You gay now. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> I said, damn, man. It's a setup. Like I said, man, I'm for everybody right, though. I believe everybody should be able to do what they want to. It's just certain shit you got to pay attention to. Like, I'm not going to hire a pedophile to work at the school cafeteria. <laughs> so who in the fuck thought it was a good idea in HR to hire the gay man as the bathroom attendant? <laughs> like, why would you put him around all that temptation? I'm at the club one night, I, you know, I get off stage from doing my thing, so I go to the restroom. I ain't got the whole mind, I'm blessed. So I'm sitting there doing my shit. Big dick niggas will catch that later on. Uh, everybody else, what, what does he mean? I have to hold mine. <laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> Out the blue, this motherfucker come right in front of me. He squeeze in the mix. You want some candy? I'm like, man, you don't get them goddamn peppermints out my face, nigga. <laughs> no goddamn Jolly Ranchers right now. Let me shake my dick first, son. <laughs> well, let me know. I'm going to be right over here. And then he floated away. <laughs> got, to be, got to be careful. I see I got my Hispanic family in this motherfucker. How y'all feeling, baby? k pop soul. What's happening? What's happening? I fuck with y'all so tough, it ain't even funny, goddammit. But my people, if you don't know no Spanish, but you better get you some Rosetta Stone around this motherfucker. Learn that shit. That Espanolo, that's some smooth, slick shit. I had a court date a month ago. I'm in court over some goofy shit, seatbelt ticket. And I'm in court. Hispanic man go before me, Mr. Rivera. Old school Hispanic. I'm talking about the tight Levi 501s. He had a belt buckle, looked like a license plate on his motherfucking ass. It was so big. Like a gold license plate. That motherfucker just sitting there with a rooster on that bitch. Had the silk shirt tucked in with the motherfucking comb over and he was smelling like some steps and cologne or some shit like that. And he was sitting there and the judge was like, Mr. Rivera, this is when I learned that Spanish is one of the sexiest, most seductive language you can never fucking speak. Ms. Rivera stood in front of the judge. She was like, we got you on a $3,000 ticket. We got you on no license, no registration, uh, no insurance. Goddamn, uh, 40 pounds of illegal fruit and two roosters in the front seat. <laughs> How do you please? <laughs> nigga, Mr. Rivera was so slick, that nigga walked up to the judge. He was like, hey, my friend. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that mean in Spanish, but that means something. This shit... I said, he just brainwashed that bitch. Cause she was, <laughs> and she looked at him, he said, Lisey, mama, Lisey, Lisey, Lisey. And the light was green. And then he no green. And so I go, bang, I no see, mama, I no see, I no see. <laughs> Nigga, this bitch said, boom, case dismissed. I said, oh, shit. That's some player shit right there. You know how a nigga do. I'm, I see something at work, I'm running with it. She's like, Mr. Wiley, you can come for it. We got you on a $60 seatbelt ticket. How do you plead? I'm like, shit. Lease him, I'm like, lease him. That bitch like, boom, six months in the county. Bailiff, get him. I'm like, oh, oh, oh. I'm like, Mr. Revere. He said, I know C, Papa, I know C. I know C. I know C. I'm like, come help a nigga out, man. <laughs> Got to be careful, goddammit. 
I guess Amazon tired of a nigga They done caught up to me and my bullshit Guess they got tired of me ordering shit Saying I didn't get it It's all good They caught me slipping, nigga uh, delivering some shit the other morning and he just knocking on the door. I'm like, no, leave it at the door, baby. Take a picture. <laughs> so I was like, somebody took it. <laughs> that motherfucker knocked at that door for 45 minutes. I'm like, God damn. <laughs> I just opened the door. The nigga was like, I need you to hold this for me. Play on, hold that for me one second. We'll just thank you. All right, hold on one second. <laughs> <laughs> Making sure you got this one, nigga. All right, have a good day. <laughs> I said, all right, you motherfucker slick. <laughs> y'all slick. <laughs> I, see how it, I see how it is. Y'all slick to the motherfucker. Y'all done caught up to a nigga. All right. <laughs> Let me go back to the laboratory, think of some shit. I get you. <laughs> I don't like to be beat. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. But before I get out of here, man, I want to salute all the couples. Any couples in here tonight? I see we got some couples in here. Hold that together, man. Hold that together. Ain't shit wrong with, you know, ain't nothing wrong with having somebody to love on. It makes shit a lot easier, especially mortgage. <laughs> ain't shit like not paying a whole mortgage. This is just a beautiful feeling. You love a motherfucker when they come with they have. Salute to y'all, man. Keep that shit going, baby. I'm trying to find me somebody, man. I just keep getting older women, though. I keep getting cougars. I'd be standing at the bar chilling, all I hear is wow. God damn. Some old lady come out the blue like, hello, young man. My name is Barbara. <laughs> what are you drinking, young man? I was like, I'm fucking with this rock. Oh, fooey, I don't. I got like, I guess that's, that ain't upscale enough for this old bitch. She like, bartender, get us two ripples, please. Ripple? Bitch, what the fuck is ripple? <laughs> let me tell you, young fella, something. If you ain't never fucked no cougar, baby, let me tell you something. You're missing out on life. Get you some of that old pussy. I had an old woman taught me everything that was about, that was ever to be taught. I even learned how to eat old pussy from an older woman. Yeah, and that's when I realized eating old pussy give you wisdom and intellect, gives you insight. Cause I was eating that motherfucker, I was going to work on. It. I just jumped up off the blue. I was like, MC equals square. She was like, Get back down there. Get back down there and get your education. I mean, it's serious. And that's when I also learned that it has a lot of nutritional value. Like, I haven't had a razor bump, a hair bump, a blemish, nothing. Just smooth and chocolate to the motherfucker. So, eat some pussy. Quick fun fact. Did you know that good pussy could get eczema? A lot of you didn't know that. You've been sitting next to the cure your whole life. A lot of you niggas been having fucked up skin since the second grade. Your mama done spent all that money on lubiderm and the ointments and all that shit on your ass to keep you from looking like sandpaper and you were sitting next to the cure your whole life. <laughs> you niggas best start eating pussy. It's very healthy too. I used to be, shit, almost 300 pounds. Look at me now. <laughs> Fuck Subway, all pussy died. Got to enjoy yourself, man. Shit, got to enjoy yourself. It's, it is some setbacks to when you're dealing with older women, though. You know, you're going to get sent on a lot of medication runs. <laughs> like, I'm always in CVS. And my back seat is full of them long-ass fucking football field long receipts that CVS give you. I don't even understand that shit. I'm like, ma'am, you can save all that goddamn paper now. <laughs> shit. I went in CVS, I had a cold. I'm standing there paying for some Vicks NyQuil. By the time she printed out the receipt, I wasn't even sick no more. I was like, man, just give me my money back. Give me my money back. Give me a refund. <laughs> I'm gonna here for a week and a half. This shit gone. Give my goddamn money back. <laughs> but take care of each other, man. I know this whole COVID situation is not over. It looks like it's coming back, so stay safe. You know, keep your masks on and understand that if I'm in my circle at Walmart, 
stay in your fucking circle at Walmart too. Some of you motherfuckers do not understand personal space. I had a nigga on my back so close, I just told him, I was like, can you give me my wallet player? Thank you, man. Let me pay for this shit so I can get the fuck out of here. Can you get your dick off my back, sir? This is sexual assault. Get your dick off my back, white man. White people do not know about personal space, motherfucker. Tap. He's like, oh my God, excuse me, what aisle did you get those on? <laughs> get your dick off me, man. <laughs> you don't lead into a conversation with your dick, sir. That's offensive. <laughs> Put your dick up, man. <laughs> Got to be careful. Got to be careful. Oh, and I, I see some, you know, it's some, it's some amazingly beautiful women in here. Give yourselves a round of applause, ladies. But I'm, I'm, I'm super fond of big girls. I like it. I see some healthy girls in here. I love y'all, baby. Just thank you for being yourself. God damn it. I love y'all. And I say why? Because I found out that big girls keep a snack drawer on the side of their bed. And when you come out that pussy, she will give you a Lunchable and a cold Capri Sun. You be ass naked on the edge of the bed, nigga, feet dangling, just, baby, this one had a butterfinger in it. <laughs> so big girls, I love y'all to death, baby. You go over, you know what I mean, little slim thing house, room smell like all them Victoria's Secret bath and body works and all that shit. Hell no, not no big girl room, nigga. It smell like chili cheese Fritos. <laughs> <laughs> That motherfucker smell like corny asada. I mean, where you get some corny asada body spray? <laughs> Bitch, that's nice. <laughs> Brother, this pussy tastes like chorizo. What is this nice? <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> Ceviche body wash. Bitch, this is nice. <laughs> hey, I'm comedian Brandon Wiley. Y'all enjoy yourself, man. Appreciate it. This has been a Funny Media Group production.